So crazy times at the uh, range. People just loving this thing. Yeah, we had two guns that we had on the line. We sh shot a total of 4,000 rounds due to two guns. Really? Um, so we were figuring most people shot a cylinder, some shot two. So we figured, okay, so if you figure 10 rounds per person, over 400 people came through our right. range. Oh, you had a long line, man. Yep. Was, uh, it probably was one of the longest lines I saw of all the gun makers at, yeah. at media day. It was, it was really something else. They, so. they actually called that ceasefire. We had a line yet. Oh, really? <laughs> So you couldn't work them through once they call ceasefire. It's yeah, over. That, that was it. It's yeah. Done deal, right? Oh, look there, we're up. So, hey everybody, Tom Gresham here with Gun Talk. We have Mark Reddle from Colt, and we have this thing that everybody's been talking about. I mean, everybody has been talking about. Yes, it is the Colt Python, uh, available in four and a quarter and six inch barrels. Correct. All right. Now I just have to tell everybody because it's bragging. All right. It's, uh, we got to shoot this long before everybody else did. You guys came down like. Three months ago now, almost two months ago at least. Yes, you Something were like that. You were the first people outside the factory to actually saw it. Were we really? And, yes. Wow. And what was cool is we also brought an old python, six inch, well, my my father's mm -hmm. python, which now belongs to our, my son Ryan. Yep. And we did side by side. And look, for those who don't know, let me just explain. This is called a revolver. <laughs> for all of those under like 35, right? Yep. Uh, I actually had people on the internet saying. What's the point of that? It's obsolete. Who would want a thing like that? Nine millimeter will do everything this will do. Right. I don't think so. I don't think so, but go ahead with that, young man. That's fine. And then I go out there to the media day yesterday at the range, and you had the longest lines of anybody out there. People wanting to shoot this thing. Gee, why? All you have to do is pick it up and pull the trigger. And then you go, oh, I get it. Especially Look. with the accuracy that these guns are delivering okay. today. I've been telling people, and they think I have two heads when I say this. And I am a huge fan of the Python, the old Python. Well, look at the camera. This new one is better than the old one. It's stronger. The trigger is better. It is better made. And people say, well, where's all the hand fitting? Unnecessary. This is not a 1956 design. I mean, I don't want to steal your thunder, but I'm just telling people, this is me. You can bet on it. I think it's better. Why? Why is it better? As you were referred to machining, with our equipment today, CNC machining, we can hold parts to such a tight tolerance. Yeah. Virtually hand fitting is gone. Everybody says, oh, hand fitted guns. Well, we had hand fitted guns because parts were. Machines were, were sloppy. <laughs> exactly. I mean, you had old rattly milling yep. machines and lathes and things. Right. Even the one part that needs to be fitted to each gun is the hand. The hand is the part that actually rotates the cylinder okay. every time you pull the right. trigger. You got to get the timing right. Correct. This gun, when it's assembled with the side plate off, is put into a CNC machine. Yeah. The hand is put in a fixture. It is measured by that CNC machine and then cut the primary no. and the secondary cut to the gun. So the, the hand fitting is still done with a CNC machine. Correct. So then all your <laughs> angles are correctly done. Right. You know, no matter how good a guy is with a file, eh, once in a while they yeah. get a little sideways yeah. or something. Yeah. Um, metal is better today. I'm just going to ask you, because you told me, you said, look, the old pythons, as good as they were, you, they could not handle a steady diet of magnum loads. Correct. Fair? Correct. Okay. So what'd you change? Well, today's metallurgy and the type of metal is much better. We've also increased the, the top thickness of the top strap. Okay, right in here. Yep. All right. And the other thing we did, one of the weakest parts on a, a revolver with an adjustable sight is when you mill that top strap, most of the weakness is on the back side because that's where the force of the gun is. Really? So what we did is we actually scalped the underneath of this adjustable site so we could leave more material in the top strap from the original one when we redesigned the rear sight for the gun. Okay, that's interesting. The other thing is this gun is a one-piece barrel. It's not a sleeve barrel. A lot of your new modern revolvers today, right. they have a sleeve barrel that's thin metal, and then they put a shroud over it. Okay, so this what's the difference? It, what's that do for you? Strength. Okay. If you took a high-speed photo of a sleeve barrel without the sleeve on it, you can actually almost see that round going down where it expands the barrel slightly and then goes it's like out. A, like a snake eating a rat. Correct. You just see that thing going down the barrel. Holy All right, cow. this is one-piece billet steel that this is machined out of. Huh. I'll be darned. Yep. Now, okay, so it's, are the internals the same? They're not the same either, are they? No, we actually reduced the number of parts in it by eight. 
Uh, the reason we did that is there's a lot of little parts in here that we needed for that, that really good trigger and everything. But by right. redesigning the way the V-spring works and the rebound for the trigger and everything, it's a, a smoother trigger. If you measure six shots, one for each chamber right. on a new Python, the graph is almost identical. You're getting about a 1% to 2% difference in trigger pull. Okay. We have original pythons at the plant, right. hand fit it, but mm -hmm. you'll get one like that, another one like oh. this, because the consistency of that, when that cylinder going around because of all the parts. Well, and as a professional shooter, you know that the key to accuracy is consistency. Correct. And so if you've got a different trigger pull, you know, six different times, how can you possibly be as accurate as possible? Exactly. It, it, I tell people, one of the things I really love about this gun, there's a certain criteria for me to buy a gun. Okay. Number one is, it has to look cool. Oh, there's right, no right. Check the box on that one, that's easy. You know, okay, right. we got that. It has to be strong enough to handle the diet of ammo that I'm going to be putting through it. If I'm going to be shooting 30, 40,000 rounds through a gun a year, right. it has to be that durable. Okay. It has to be reliable. It has to work every time I pull the trigger and go bang. Right. And the last thing, it has to have a nice trigger pull. And this, I can check every box off right. on this gun. Right. We're looking at this, uh, some of the shots we did out at the range. Yep. I mean, you look at that. How gorgeous is this revolver? I mean, this is just a beautiful revolver. The great lines comes in a four and a quarter and a six inch barrel. Correct. And you said the orders are coming in almost 50-50. Correct. It, the six inch barrel is about 3% more than the four and a quarter. Hardly any difference. So, you know, people no. make up their mind. Now, you know, I mean, and of course, the first thing people say, it's, it's always the weirdest thing. People. Question. Oh, we, God. We've got some comments coming in. Uh, my favorite is, <laughs> Yes. I will not look at a python in the store. I will not look at a python in the store. I will not look at a python okay. in the store. Let me give you some personal <laughs> advice. Whatever you do, do not look at a python in the store. Because if it's in the store and if it's for sale, it will be in your hands when you walk out of the store. Absolutely. It is, It is. I mean, all right, here's the other thing. And KJ, we'll get to the next comment in just a second. When you do a full double action trigger pull with this gun, one of the differences is between this and the old one, as good as the old one was, this one doesn't stack. Correct. The stacking is when it gets right to the end and it gets a little bit harder, and that's when you try to snatch it. And that's the most critical part of the trigger that's, stroke. That's when it goes off. Yep. Everything else is just prepping it. And if you try to come back here and yank it, you're going to be inaccurate. But if you could just sweep it like that, that's when you're going to shoot well with it. Exactly. Fair? Yep. What you got, KJ? Got uh We've got another one that says, I need to shoot it so that I can get it. <laughs> so, <laughs> have to pass let, it before we can reach it. Let, let me exactly. just tell you, no, you don't. Uh, here's the deal. Okay. We can officially, all right, I'm going to officially give everyone permission. You are now enabled. You can go buy a Coat Python. It's okay. And you can just say, Tom said I have permission, so you got to do it, right? I agree 100%. Okay. Uh, you guys have are taken orders for these, selling far more than I think you projected. Correct. Be, before we actually release that we are reintroducing it January 1st, right. we were shipping to our distribution for an entire month of December. Right. Be, prior to it, would, of course, they understand they couldn't tell anybody about it. Right. Uh, those sold out overnight, and now we do have quite a backlog. There's, but a, there's a waiting list, right? We are building them every oh, are day. You? Every okay. day. They're going out the door. Yes. What you got, KJ? Right now, we've got, you know, as gun owners, we're never satisfied. And they all are talking, for some odd reason, they about the, the blue. No, well, they do want the blue. Okay. But they're, they're all of a sudden talking about the next gun. If oh, yeah. I, I mean, oh, that's yeah. all they're doing. Okay. Well, first thing they say is, this is lovely, but I want it in blue. Correct. Okay. Uh, first of all, people, if they don't know, they probably everybody knows by now, uh, price on this MSRP is $14.99? Correct. Okay, fourteen ninety nine. People are going to say, "Well, that's expensive." Have you priced a used Python? Uh, I won't even go that route. O two was the last time we had it in our published price list. Okay, so almost uh, twenty years ago, right? It was one thousand eighty two dollars. Holy cow! Actually, that's a price reduction. This is actually a price reduction. <laughs> it is. And okay, so this is available in stainless, polished stainless, right now. Yep. Okay. Uh, to make it blued, one of the main things that <laughs> this is a gun making thing. For people to understand, if you had to make it in blue, you also have to do really great polishing on it before you can blue it, right? Correct, and it means all the parts have to be made in blue. Yes. The hammer, trigger, everything, because you couldn't 
you know, try to iron bond or coat a stainless one and have it matched. So everything has no. to be done. It's, it's not impossible, but it's going to take it's time good. to work through the process. And I'm just going to I'm gonna make a wild hair guess. It would add a grand to the price of the gun. That I, mean, I, I, I honestly... I know. I, I'm just making this up as I go. To do that royal blue finish, there's yeah. a lot of polish. I know. It's a lot of polish. It, it, it's crazy. As so, nice so, as all right, these so KJ, are. When they're asking about uh, what's the next gun, are they like specifically asking about, like, oh, gee, perhaps a 44 Magnum? No. No? An Anaconda. Yes. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I, I, of course. That, that's what I'm saying. They're asking about the Anaconda. 44 Magnum. And I can I'm here to tell you, I can officially announce the Anaconda will be produced tomorrow. Yeah, we you, had nothing you, else. You Last night at that? the hotel, we figured it out. <laughs> oh, and yes, and this is news to Colt. Just <laughs> to let you know. Well, it's interesting because we did the Cobra, which is the small frame. Right. And the next variation, of course, was the King Cobra, yep. which was a, a beefier, but okay. it was the small frame. This is the, the this medium is the mid, frame. This, this is the medium yep. size frame. Yeah. And actually, that's why it feels so good in your hand. It takes up more. For me, the trigger reach is really yep. perfect. It, it really is. It's yep. like, okay, if I come over here, it just... Yep. You know, and this gun actually works well from either side. Oh, it, yeah. It will work left-handed as well as right-handed. Yep. And you don't even charge extra for that. Correct. Okay, Real so, easy to tell if it's loaded or not. <laughs> yeah, that is true. How, is it loaded? Can you see anything? Okay. Yeah. All right. So, seriously, though, Anaconda. I mean, one would logically think if we're starting to increase the frame sizes, there's a goal here. And historically, Colt made all these different size revolvers. Correct. So, it and, would not be crazy to think you got a, a larger frame company. What I can tell you is, over the last couple of years, the one thing since Paul Spitali came in and, and the marketing team and production team got together, we have been putting more and more emphasis in the handgun area mm -hmm. and bringing products in that people want, and we're listening to them. So, yes, there's a progression we're going to do. I'm not saying we're not working. I'm not going to say it'll be here next year. But, of course, you know, we do have the next two things on the plate would be a blued version of this. Right. And a large, the large frame gun. Right. And, then, and then the fully automatic revolver. <laughs> well, yeah, well, I'm still looking for the magazine well on this one. <laughs> <laughs> it's hidden. Um, I think, and I would love to get your, your take on this, I think over the last few years, I don't know how long, two, three, five, there's been a renewed interest in older designs, mm -hmm. lever action rifles and revolvers. Mm -hmm. Do you have any idea what that's about or what it, what's the attraction for people? I mean, look, you shoot semi-automatics really fast. You're a competition shooter. Yeah. And that's your life. And yet when you pick that up, your eyes light up. Oh, yeah. What's uh, it, what, what, what is that? Maybe it's just, wait, wait, you know, wait, 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 wait. Here, you, have to, you have to talk while you have it in your hands. Look at this. For me, a revolver brings back maybe that simpler time that we all talk about. Uh, of course, movies portraying right, right. the older days, the 50s, the 60s, where a lot of people had the revolvers. <laughs> but there's just something about the, the heft, the feel of a steel revolver with wood grips that and, it, and when you got an underlug barrel man that thing just hangs out there it just doesn't move you got enough weight out there it's a uh, different, it, different sensation it is and yes i shoot auto loaders a lot i know um i have gone out shooting with some people that that really love revolvers and i'll shoot well with it. i said i never told you i couldn't shoot it i just right. <laughs> you know the, <laughs> the old, old quickly, quickly line, quickly line yes. but um it's just something about putting those six cartridges in and coming up, and, and I, I, I tell people, it's rolling through a trigger. It's a totally a good, different concept a than a polymer gun or anything that, that it's rolling. rolling. Yeah. And I mean, what we're talking about is shooting a double action. Not, now, this obviously it, will shoot exceptionally well, single action. You can cock the hammer, yeah. and then it's got a great little light trigger pull. It's wonderful. Right. But when you roll right through it, you know, it's terrific. KJ. We do have a question from uh, Craig Webb. He is actually wondering about... Uh, the older models. He's curious what's going to happen to the value of the ones already in the collection. I'm offering hundred dollars for each one. Simple as that. I mean, we, uh, now you can you can just dump that old thing. I'll I'll take it off your hands. How's that? We've had that question quite a bit, and the best thing I can tell you is that's the guys with the early muscle cars, the early Corvettes. The new Corvettes have not hurt the value of them at all what i will say is the guys that have collected the early ones and spent a lot of money they can now go out and buy one that they can shoot a they lot can shoot and the other thing is you mentioned this is stronger i mean 
And you had some numbers when we, you brought it down and showed it to us. It's like, how many rounds of Magnum have you been able to put through this thing and have it not come apart? Like 10,000? Yeah. Yeah. Dry fire cycles, we've done over 20,000 rounds, just dry fire, just for the deaction right. and everything. Right. Uh, usually our protocol is about 7,500 rounds. Okay. That, that I, and I can tell you, I shot that many rounds through the King Cobra oh, and Magnum. Wow. But this Ouch. one, we actually went up to about 12,000 rounds. 12,000 rounds. Yep. And, and just to put a fine point on it, as good as the original Pythons were, you could not run 12,000 rounds of full 357 Magnum through it. They wouldn't yep. hold up to that. Right. Just wouldn't. That being said, though, I, I really don't look forward to shooting 357 Magnum in the near future. <laughs> no, I understand. I mean, because, you know, and you shoot 38s in here. Yep. The other thing, and one of my theories on why people have kind of rediscovered the revolver, this is a stick shift. Yep. There's something, you get more connected to your gun you are actually actuating everything. Mm -hmm. You are turning the cylinder, you are cocking the hammer, you're feeling the mechanism work, and then when it's time to unload it, and for those of you who don't know, I mean, you're watching Mark and I, we're doing this thing. Um, you put your left hand, if you're right hand shooter, put your left hand in, you actually stick your fingers right through the middle of this to thing. To hold it open, yeah. You hold it open, and then when you're loading it, you roll it like this, because you'll see people doing all kind of goofy stuff when they yep. first try to figure it out, how do I load this thing? Just Stick your fingers through there and load it and turn it with your thumb. I mean, that's what I do. Yeah. I don't know what you do, but that's, you yeah, know. Yeah, same thing. Okay. Um, the one thing I think, too, is the simplicity of it. Absolutely, um, yeah. Because these guns are heavy, they take a lot of recoil out. If I had a new shooter, you can t take a 38 Special out with this. It's yes. very comfortable for them to shoot. And once they master that nice rolling trigger, mm -hmm. you can shoot any gun. At the, you know, auto loaders are easy compared to that. But I just find for a lot of people are buying them for a house gun because yeah. they're simple. They can see. And you, you can you, put you, a lot. You cannot improve on the 357 Magnum cartridge as a self-defense cartridge. No, that was always. Handgun. That was the standard. That was the standard. 125 grain bullet, yep. right? Yeah, they can all talk about how great the 9 millimeter is doing. Well, 357 was no. always top. Okay, got to ask you. You're out there yesterday at the range. You guys are playing around with this thing. And we talk about it's accurate. So tell them how far you were shooting and what you were doing with this thing. Well, it wasn't just me. I, I, the, the four and a quarter inch, they had a silo, uh, like a USPSA target out. Right. I, I just shot two rounds at it, hit both rounds, 200 yards. 200 yards. Paul Spitali shot it a few times. I know Justin Baldini, but the real clincher was is when we had writers come up, gun dealers come up, and we had three or four of them hit that 200-yard target. Mm -hmm. So it, it's not just you, you somebody. You really can do it. They really are that accurate. They are that much fun to shoot. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, it's like all of this is almost background noise because the, really the only message you need, the only thing you really need to know is the Python is back. And you can go buy it. You may not be able to get it right now, but here's the deal. If you do find it in your store and you think you might want it, and if you walk out of the store, you are a fool because it won't be there when you come back. Correct. Pretty good idea, right? Mm -hmm. And you might want to get in line and get your order in at your dealer. Yes. I mean, these are, these are awesome. I am so excited. I mean. Well, you're a gun guy. I'm a gun guy. I love these things. I mean, I yep. just, these, this is the epitome of cool when it comes to guns. Yes, it is. It really is. Well done. Mark Reddle, thank you so much. Well, thanks for having me, Tom. You bet. Always fun. Check it out. The new Colt Python. The new Colt Python. All right. Gun Talk right here. We're gonna, all week long, we're going to be bringing you new stories, new products, what's going on here, maybe even some political news. You never know. People pop in here. So be sure to tune in. Make sure that you get the notifications when our videos go up on Facebook and on YouTube, and join us right here. Thanks so much. Live from SHOT Show, presented by Palmetto State Armory. For more great gun content, subscribe to our YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter pages. You can always watch the Gun Talk channels on Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon. And of course, you can always find us at guntalk.com. Thanks for watching.